Warning. There are many unexplained forces in the universe. Some can be dangerous and harmful to your health. To avoid any potential harm to you or your family, do not try this at home. He stood probably about that tall. He, um, he scares me. Okay. Is there anything else that's here that scares you? Um, there's a lot here that scares me. into the living room and you know already I kind of just feel like the air just got thick. Uh, real thick, real heavy, kind of hard for you to breathe a little bit. It's kind of a little, you know, feel a little bit disoriented actually. Now as I walk through I can kind of pick up where they may have had experiences. I kind of get like just glimpses or pictures of kind of what maybe went down here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head upstairs. Oh, wow. Um, so as I'm going up the stairs, I don't know if you can see that there's a mirror there. I just saw a man's face in that mirror, and I got the the actual feeling of him saying, go back downstairs, don't come up here. But we're going to go upstairs anyways. Okay, so this is kind of a, a different feeling. Uh, there is a man in here, very angry, very irritated by the fact that I'm sitting on this bed right now. He's very territorial, I feel. Yeah, he doesn't want us in here. He's not going anywhere. He's very protective, very territorial. I can almost envision him just over her at night, just, just piercing a hole in her forehead while she sleeps. Yeah, very nasty. Very nasty man. Alright, we're gonna give him a minute because he's just not a good man and this this does not feel good at all. Can you breathe in there? Wow, that's a lot. <sighs> you gotta catch your breath a little bit, huh? They're so, so thick in there, you can't even breathe. Wow. 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 Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, this is strange. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a little strange. I, I've never been in a bathroom where it felt like this. Again, it feels completely different than the rest of the house. First thing I noticed was my eyes, there's some sort of apparition blob sitting over on the corner. I don't know why that would be there, but there's definitely something here and I almost envision it watching. Her and it just seems to all be based around the homeowner. Like they're very attached to her, they're very territorial of her, and even when it comes to the bathroom, they're in here watching her as well. So it's not, again, not a good feeling at all. And it's like you, you can only stay in these rooms so long. This is actually really strange. So she's never alone. She's never alone. Even never, not for one minute, not even in the shower. There's always somebody there. Always watching. somebody attached to her. Always. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I can already tell you I don't want to go up here. Already I'm being warned not to go up there. So uh I guess let's go up there. Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, so as you can feel again, a place you don't want to be in.
definitely a place you don't want to be in. Again, just like the other room, very hard to breathe, very, God, I got goosebumps from head to toe. It's that direction. I'm standing here right now because they don't even want me to go in that direction. There's actually another male. Males are, are big in this house. I don't know why, but it's mostly all males in here. There's a lot of probably stuff that we don't know is going on in this household, but there has been conjuring of the spirits here and she has brought many in that are now attached to her. They're all males. They're all territorial. They will be violent with her and they will be violent with anybody else that tries to come between her, close to her, any way, shape, or form. So uh, this is going to be a heck of a night. And on that note, I'm being told to get the fuck out of here. So I'm going to follow that direction. What's that? I just got fucking pushed. Did you really? I'm not even kidding. Wow. Holy shit. Go, 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 go. Yeah, because I moved that box. I shouldn't have kept that. Woo! You know what it's oh, funny oh, you no. say that? Because I felt like I got pushed when I was going up the stairs. Buck, I almost fell backwards. Buck. Wow. Oh shit. Yeah, I'm out. Done. That's crazy. Hi everyone. Hey, how's it going? Good. Now you are a private investigator, correct? Yes. So uh, have you done any of the history on your on your own home? Um, I've done a little bit. Um, as far as I know, the house was built in 1815. Um, Augustus Porter lived here in uh, Peter B. Porter. Okay, now for the people watching who don't know who Augustus Porter is, what, can you fill them in on who he is? Um, this once before Niagara Falls was named Manchester. And uh, he was the first uh, like land developer, judge, postman, everything for the city of Niagara Falls. So he's basically the founder of Niagara Falls. Yes. Safe to say, right? So Augustus Porter is historically probably the most important person that ever lived in Niagara Falls. Uh, and this was his home. Yes. I took a picture and actually there was a lot of orbs in it. I never noticed that there was actually a man in the picture until later on. Okay. Uh, what does this man look like from the picture? Um, like Civil War era. It's safe to say that this could be maybe Augustus Porter or maybe a family member of Augustus. We do know a lot of the Porters actually went through the deed um, and actually lived here. So that time frame, when we're talking about War, uh, War of 1812 and we're also talking about this Civil War era. So that time frame, this house was owned by the Porters. So I would believe that anybody that's wearing this uniform um, could possibly be, you know, one of this, a member of this family. Now, how long have you lived here, Tina? 14 years. 14 years. When did the experiences start to happen for you when you moved in? Um, actually, I would say after the first two weeks. After the, so almost immediately you were um, having experiences that you couldn't explain. Yes, um, my daughter was setting her cup on the coffee table and it would slide off like you would slide a glass down a bar and fly off the other end. She'd pick it up, set it back down, it'd fly off the other end. We do know that there was a couple actual deaths within the home, correct? Yes. Can you just fill us in on, on what um, what I deaths have occurred here? Um, there was actually a murder in the early 80s in my living room. I actually found that from the mailman. Okay. The first week I lived in here, that kind of scared the crap out of me. What were the circumstances of, of the murder? Uh, one thought the other one was cheating during the card game and he stabbed him to death. Okay, so they, they were in the room playing cards and obviously this is, you know, just escalated into um, a murder. Yes. Okay, so these two people knew each other, were probably friends, right? They, act, they were actually family. Jeez. They were all drinking. Wow. And they stabbed him to death over a car game. Yes. Okay. Um, any other deaths in the home that you know of? Um, I know, I think it was the early 90s, a man died in my bedroom by a massive heart attack. Right in your bedroom? Mm hmm Do you know anything about this man at all? No, I don't. Okay. Well, maybe, hopefully we can, you know, find something out and 
maybe we'll have a piece of information for you about this man if he's here. When we leave, what would be, uh, what would make you satisfied with our investigation? Um, trying to find out what they want, why they're here, and if they're stuck, if they want to go, I want them to leave. I don't want them to be stuck. Okay. This would be your, your kitchen, obviously, right? Yes. So what experiences have you had here? Um, actually, my niece was sitting here, and I was sitting here, and a black mist forms in that corner up here, and we heard a woman yell, get out. We went to go leave. The car would not start. This black mist that formed, how, how big was it? Like how significant Oh, it God. It went straight from the edge here over to the ceiling fan, so probably five, six feet. Okay, and like how, you know, were you able to see through it, or was this a... No, it was mass, solid. Solid black mass. Yes, I actually have pictures of it. You do have pictures of it? Yes. This is the actual spot where the guy was murdered over the car game, correct? Yes. Do you know whereabouts he actually died? Um, he was about right in this area, because this head wall was always here. Okay. Um, actually the mailman told me and he actually showed me this is about the spot. And the reason why there's carpet in here now is because there is blood stains and hack marks on the floor. From this very violent murder. Yes. Have you ever seen what's under the carpet? No, I've never pulled it up. This is, I'm just going by what the mailman told me and he didn't even know me, so mm -hmm. I feel there's no reason for him to lie to me. I entered the living room and, you know, already I kind of just feel like the air just got thick. Uh, real stiff, real heavy, kind of hard for you to breathe a little bit. Well, the one night I was coming home and I had to go to the bathroom really bad, I was running up the stairs. So I come running around the corner here and I actually ran, he was about right here, face to face with a man. It scared the crap out of me because I was not expecting to see anyone in my house. But also at the same time, I realized I could see through him. I know he was about the same height as me because we could see eye to eye. It scared me so bad, I ran into my room and just slammed the door. Do you remember what he looks like at all? Yes, he was in, actually in jeans and a white t-shirt. Um, very modern clothes, so I would say probably 80s and 90s. Was he an older gentleman, younger gentleman? No, he was probably early 20s. Early 20s? Very young. So, you know, just thinking of some of the deaths that have occurred here, we have an old man that died in the bedroom, which is behind me, mm -hmm. and then we have a younger man who was murdered in the home. So, could this be the gentleman who lost his life downstairs and still here in the house? Do you believe that that's possible? Oh, yes, I do. He, um, he scares me. Okay. Is there anything else that's here that scares you? Um, there's a lot here that scares me. So as I'm going up the stairs, I don't know if you can see that, there's a mirror there. I just saw a man's face in that mirror and I got the, the actual feeling of him saying, go back downstairs, don't come up here. This is your bedroom. Now this is where the last person who had lost her life in the home, you said he had a heart attack and died in this room, correct? Yes. Okay. And if you see with the way the room's shaped, there's only one place where the bed can go. Okay. So obviously where you sleep, is most likely around about where this gentleman had slept too, right? Yes. Okay, so now what sort of experiences have you had in this room? Um, I can hear walking. I've had the door. From inside the room? Yes, I've had this door actually open and close on me. Uh, I feel like I'm being watched when I'm sleeping. And that I don't like. Okay, well obviously, you know, that could keep you up at night. Right? Yeah. So, it's safe to say you don't really get a lot of sleep in here, right? No. He's very territorial, I feel. Yeah, he doesn't want us in here. He's not going anywhere. He's very protective, very territorial. I can almost envision him just over her at night, just, just piercing a hole in her forehead while she sleeps. I got up to go in to wash my hands because we were making ice cream like, with kids five years old, so they got a mess. And I went in there, and then I had opened the door to leave the bathroom, and when I opened it, it was almost like he was already in the doorway, like instantly. It was. Uh, when you say he, what do you mean? An older 
colonial type man. He had the this big head on. Right. You could, could you see through him? It was kind of, but it was like he was almost right there, like a person. And he just stood in the door, right? Almost and like blocking you from leaving the... Yeah. He looked... Like mean. Like... He looked mean. This bathroom has actually been kind of one of the key rooms uh, as far as the activity is concerned. You know, it seems to me like your niece has had experiences here, and from what we have, you know, uh, you put what you've told me in previous conversations that you've also had experiences here, correct? Yes. Okay. So what what's going on with the bathroom? Um, this is the tub that I was in when um, I had my teeth busted. I was just relaxing, soaking, enjoying my bath, and then I just felt that sharp pain to my mouth, like someone hit me. I leaned forward, pushed my tongue against my teeth, and actually hit pieces of my teeth in my hand. And then another time when I was in here, I was showering, and I was home alone, and a black figure went by the shower doors. I figured my husband came home. When I was showering, then they pressed the plunger to the tub, and it automatically turns to a bath. That will not just fall. You have to push it. So you saw the sh shadow figure walk past? Yes, and then it turned from shower to tub. Okay, so this is gonna be a little strange. I I've never been in a bathroom where it felt like this. Again, it feels completely different than the rest of the house. First thing I noticed was my eyes, there's some sort of apparition blob sitting over in the corner. I don't know why that would be there, but there's definitely something here and I almost envision it watching I'm hearing banging come up from the stairs. You guys hear that? You hear it? I heard a little thump. Okay. Uh, so somebody's again. walking around. Yeah, I hear it. Hey, is there any significance? What's above us? Um, that is the attic. And actually, a lot of times at night, I will hear a lot of walking. You can hear the floorboards creak. But I've been here for so long, and I'm so used to it, I usually just yell, knock it off. Which they usually do, and then they'll start up again a little bit later. Okay, so there is activity. This is a common thing. You hear footsteps going on. Because I'm telling you right now, I hear footsteps going on up there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, let's take a walk upstairs, okay? And just get a kind of uh, an idea of what's going on up there. Okay. okay. No, you hear stuff all the time. What, what's the most common thing that you hear? Commonly, it would probably be like, like sounding like people are running around upstairs. Um, I know at nighttime, it comes a little bit more like you hear like giggling. Yeah. So we were just uh, downstairs in the bathroom and kind of right above us while we were shooting uh, our scene, you know, we all kind of heard footsteps coming from up here. And you're telling me this is very common. Right? Yes. My bed is actually right underneath here. Okay. So uh, have you or anybody else had actual significant experiences up here or is this just the, the um, footsteps? Yes, I've had, you know, numerous roommates, friends that have lost apartments and stuff and come stay here. Um, my one friend was up here with his girlfriend. He was coming down the stairs. She was 10 feet behind her. He felt a shove from his back, was forced down to the bottom of the stairs and broke his forearm. Oh my gosh. Um, another time my daughter's ex-boyfriend used to stay up here. Um, he was sleeping with his head at the foot of the bed watching TV. Woke up to the TV being dropped on his head. Oh my god. And then probably about three weeks later, he woke up to being a bloody mess from getting hit in the head with a cast iron clock. The same guy? Yes. Wow. So it's safe to say he moved out after that? Yes. And most people that have stayed here never come back and usually don't talk to me anymore. Okay. So the activity seems to be directly related to males right here? Yes. The house does not like men at all. Hmm. Up here just creeps me out. I had it blocked up for years because I just don't want no one else getting hurt up here. When's that, how often do you come up here? Um, this is probably the first time I've been up here, probably five years. I refuse to come up here half the time. There's something about that staircase coming up here that scares the crap out of me every time I go by it. I feel like someone's standing there staring at me, like staring me down like they want to fight. And it just, ugh, and then I just dart to the bathroom. Jeez. Not to mention everything that's happened up here. I mean, I'd be, I'd be kind of freaked out too. I mean, yeah. So with everyone being hurt up here, I just completely blocked it off. 
as I didn't want anyone else getting hurt up here or maybe even killed. Do you feel like what's up here stays up here or do you feel it comes down? Um, I feel it comes down. Um, usually at, at night. Okay. So this is, this is a really, you know, almost sad story you're telling me. You're basically shunned off from portions of your own home. Yes. And afraid to enter certain parts of your house. Mm-hmm. This up here just doesn't make me feel right. Okay, so so downstairs in the house, we have, you know, significance of uh, a younger man who was murdered within the home. We also have an older man from within the bedroom. And then we have this unknown, darker spirit that is pretty much resides on the top floor. So all the three levels of your home are experiencing different sorts of activity? Yes, it just seems like the higher up you go, the worse it gets. And do other females feel that same, like, nervousness and afraid here. Oh, you yeah. seem to give a lot of examples with males having experiences and getting hurt especially. Have um, females been hurt as well besides um, yourself? No, not really. No. It's mostly men. But mm -hmm. um, I've had girlfriends that were here that I've never told them anything about the house and they get nervous with that staircase down there. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we got a lot of things to talk to the team about and trying to put together an investigation process so um, if you don't mind we're gonna go uh, set up and we'll be right back with you okay all right thank you so right, much thank you very thanks much, guys Jim. thank you the other room very hard to breathe very God, I got goosebumps from head to toe it's that direction I'm standing here right now because they don't even want me to go in that direction there's actually another male males are, are big in this house I don't know why but it's mostly all males in here here in the Porter house and we're about to start our investigation. Ashley, where do you want to go first? Uh, I think we're going to go to the top of the stairs first bedroom. Okay, where the guy had the heart attack? Did you know about that? No. Okay. You haven't even been up here yet, huh? You haven't been through the house? Uh, briefly. Okay. Um, I was drawn to this room first. Now, I noticed it's a completely different feel than the, than the rest of the house. When you walk in here, again, like, air very thick, uh, heavy in the chest area, just kind of hard to breathe. Um, I'd like to sit on the bed if I could. Please. I'm going to place the K2 meter down next to you as well. Okay. Now this is odd. All I want to do is just lay down. Because I just feel like this pl this plays a huge part. Now th this is also, you know, obviously this is an odd shaped, odd -shaped room. Mm -hmm. So this is the only place the bed could be in this room. And another uh, gentleman actually had, had a heart attack and died in this room. I don't know if that has anything to do with it either, but... You know what? At some point, I'm going to have to talk to her because... I kind of feel exactly what might be going on here. And uh, there is a gentleman in this room, very angry gentleman, that is very attached to her. And okay. it's kind of like she's mine. Do you, Don't feel go like, near. do you feel like he's here with us he's now? He's here right now. Well, let's try talking to him. See okay. if we can see if we can communicate with him. We have a simple K2 device on the bed next to you. Let's see if we can get uh, some responses out of him. I'm going to go ahead and lay here like I'm going to sleep. If there's anybody here in this bedroom with us that would like to communicate with us, please come and sit on the bed next to Ashley. Can you give us a sign that you're here? Can you touch that device on the bed sitting next to Ashley? Can you come and sit, lay on the bed next to Ashley, please? We don't mean you any harm. He's not liking this at all. He's not? Not at all. What is he saying? He wants us to get the hell out of the room. Why? Is this his room? This is his room. It's their room. 
He doesn't want anybody in this room but her. I got a couple of ideas of how we're going to start our investigation here. Um, I'd like to start right down here. I know from talking to uh, Tina when we did the walkthrough, she said there was a guy that actually died here, was murdered by his brother yeah. over a card game. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I want to do is just kind of go over here and see if he's willing to communicate with us, okay? All right. All right, so I just want to put a K2 meter on the floor where the postman that said that he died, all right? So let's just sit on the floor here. Okay, so uh, basically we want to try to open up a line of communication uh, to a gentleman who had lost his life in this room. So I'm getting orange over here. Can I go to orange? Okay. And it's just kind of staying there? Yeah, it looks kind of standard to me, so I think that might be a natural. You might be right over a power line from the basement, or you're getting some sort of uh, outlet from leakage, outlet leakage. Uh, you see when you pull it away from that specific area, the EMF goes away. Yeah. You should always put it in a spot where you're getting uh, basically a zero reading. And by using this thing to communicate, if it is talking or if it is manifesting itself, it should be giving off a fluctuation of EMF as that waste product of the manifestation and then we might be able to read it on our K2 meters. Okay? okay. So, um, you know, obviously we, we've left it on the floor almost right over where this guy has di died. And we haven't got any fluctuations at all. So we know, just from using this, that and right there in that right? area, there's no EMF. Mm -hmm. Okay? And obviously that's our reading. So if we are receiving some sort of fluctuation, maybe in response to our questions, we know that that's a good possibility that whatever we're experiencing is a paranormal experience. So is there anything that could give that fluctuation that would be explainable or happen? Um, a walkie-talkie. A CB radio, something like that, usually that can make it go up pretty high. Now, can that spirit box affect it? No. Okay. No, the spirit box won't affect it at all, and I'll turn it on and we'll show you. All right. speak with a gentleman here who did die in this house. Can you tell us who killed you? you hear that voice? Those three syllables. Blah, blah, blah. Can you tell us how you died? Thank you. 
So uh, at this time, we'd like to thank whatever gentleman was speaking with us. But we want to try to make room for this woman, this female that is here with us now. Here again. We're not willing to communicate with the gentleman at this time. Please step away from our equipment. Give the woman that is here an opportunity to speak with us. Again, completely different feel up here. Again, with the heavy, it just it's an area that you don't want to be in. Everything's telling you to leave, get out. Um, I believe there is also a gentleman up here, different than the gentleman in the bedroom. Again, very territorial. This is his spot. And it's all, I, I, this brings me back the same feeling that I had earlier. She's doing something. She's bringing these people in. She's calling upon these people. They're here and they're very attached to her. They do not like new people in the house. They don't want us here at all. They're afraid that we might have something to do with kind of getting rid of them. And they're angry. They're very angry. Are they indicative to the house or are they just been, they've been brought in? They have them? been brought here by so her. So these aren't any, this isn't any of the porters? No. No. Okay. This is going to sound weird. But I did do a walkthrough earlier. Okay. And in the bathroom, there's something in the bathroom. I can't say it's a someone because it was almost like this weird um, misshapen dark mist. Which, okay. And, so. and it's it's connected to her again, but it, it follows her so closely that it, 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 this sounds funny, but it literally watches her in the bathroom showering and everything in the bathroom. Okay, during the walkthrough, she said that she has seen a shadow figure walk past the you know, the, the glass. Right. And she thought it was her husband. That's her. definitely, definitely the one. And it's weird because it just kind of, they kind of pick a territory. They have run of the house, but they pick a certain territory. And that one is kind of the bathroom. She also said down in the kitchen at one point, there was a black mist up in the corner. Does that have anything to do with the same? That kind of sounds the same as what I'm thinking. That black mist could possibly travel, but that is what I, I personally came up with. What is that? What is that? I heard that. I keep hearing somebody walk up on me. Yeah, yeah. That, I heard Constantly. that. Constantly. And I just yeah. feel like somebody's right behind me. When we did our walkthrough earlier, I was actually pushed in that very same let's spot. Let's see. Let's see if we can get them. If, if there's anybody here up, up here with us, can you come here? Oh, my God. you hear that? That can't be them coming to the house. No. No, nobody's in the house except for us. No, somebody kept walking up on me. I just I kept hearing them walk right up to my back and it stopped. Can you give us a sign that you're up here with us? Make a noise? Knock on the wall? Touch this device on the floor here? But right now, the most, you know, prominent things going on in this house is the people that she's brought in. Now, wow. downstairs... Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. That was right behind you. Yeah, she's she's got a lot a lot going on around here and it kinds of clouds like everything that I would normally feel. Um, downstairs there was a gentleman and it, and I don't know it looked almost residual. It was a guy with um, a mustache that kind of what do you call it like not full man shoe. Handlebars. Yeah, it, they had a mustache like that and a longish brown hair. Um, and he walks through this house, but he's not something that she brought in. He's with the house, with the land, 
Um, and he's just kind of here. Like maybe well, like he era. lived here. Uh, probably 18, late 18, uh, well, late, mid to late 1800s if I had to pick. Okay. Um, so he's there, but he's just kind of here. Like with the house. Okay. Just kind of here. So that could be a porter. It, it very well could be. Wow. That's the only one that actually would be long here. The now, others are were brought here. The the one person that she's seen, and other other people have actually seen, is a gentleman, Civil War era, you know. Okay. That that they've encountered a couple times here, so. Okay. That's probably uh, what they're seeing. Okay. I think that it's time for her to get brought in because we have to, you know, kind of approach her on this because, you know, it's. Well, there's all kinds of weird shit going on. I don't know if she's back yet. When we leave, what would be, uh, what would make you satisfied with our investigation? Um, trying to find out what they want, why they're here, and if they're stuck, if they want to go, I want them to leave, I don't want them to be stuck. Okay. We do know that you've lived here for quite some time. You said immediately after moving into this house about 14 years ago? Yes. You've encountered spirits. Now. From the time that you were a child, you've encountered spirits, okay? Communicating with spirits is not odd for you. Right? No, not at all. Okay? So your communication efforts, all they have done is amp things up within this home, okay? Okay. And given these people basically a clear path to communicate with you. They feel it's okay. They're getting stronger, okay? And they are, it's, it's basically you're, you're the fuel to their fire, okay? So, first thing we got to tell you, stop communicating with these spirits, okay? They have built Definitely. a bond with you, okay? They have built okay. a bond with you, a very strong bond with you. It might be hard to break. You might actually get some backlash from your stopping to communicate because they're going to know that this is a step that you're taking to rid the house of them. You have spirits that are here that are only here because of you. Now, do I have to worry about physical harm? You know, yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you do. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Now, I have to ask a question, and, and I'm only asking this because this is exactly what I felt when I walked in your room. Okay. Is that the room that you were possibly uh, conjuring or investigating? Um, I am Wiccan. But I only have practiced white magic, and and honestly, I haven't done it in years. But when I did it, it was mostly in that room. So that it was in that room. Yes. Okay. I just that makes I, sense. at the time just didn't know better. Yeah. I was well, learning. sometimes we don't know what we're doing, and we're not here to say that you purposely did anything. Just sometimes we do stuff, and we don't know. We're not. We don't. We don't know what we're doing. And sometimes when you open a door, okay. What you expect to come through isn't always what comes through, right? Right. Okay, the door is open, okay? Um, we still believe that door is kind of open. Oh, okay. Whatever, you know, communication that you had opened up at that point in time is still open and been open for a while, okay? So this is giving a doorway to not only the spirits that are here, but anything that wants to come through that door. Oh, wow. Do you have a feeling of maybe how many are here? Um, I mean, right off the bat, the um, ones that you, you brought in, um, three. Three heavy-duty ones. And then there's obviously the gentleman that's connected to the house. Um, I do feel like, again, you, you said a doorway. I do feel like they come in and out. Different ones do come in and out. But the ones that you really need to worry about are the three that I mentioned. Those, those are the one that they, they have such an attachment to you. It's very, very concerning to me. That's actually very scary to me. Um, yeah, their, their attachment with you is almost eerily romantic. Yeah. They're yeah. in love with you. Yeah. Really? It's and kind of it's creepy. not, it's not a very nice love. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they, they feel they own you. It's almost like a jealous, abusive husband sort of love. A not healthy love. Oh, not good. 
That's now, what we said. Yeah. Okay. And now when people come in the south, and again, this is just an energy level because of what is in the south. Is there fighting in this house? Is there are, is there arguments in this house? Just something <coughs> that would normally be in a household, but you said it's like amped up anger and fighting. And it's constant here. Constant. I can have friends come over that are couples and they'll start fighting. There's always fighting in this house. Well, I wanted to also talk about, you know, you had mentioned, you know, you're not feeling well and you're always sick. And that, again, with these spirits, if you want to call them that, that plays a big factor. They're feeding. They're feeding off of her. You're tired because they're feeding off you. You're sick because they're feeding off of you. Oh, but it's, it's pulling well, you down and dragging you down. Well, that would explain why none of the doctors can figure out what's wrong with me. I've been through nine specialists, $150,000 in medical bills, and it really kicks my butt. Yeah. This is a real problem. It's a real big problem what do you think uh, we can do to help her well we got to find a way to shut these doors mm -hmm. it's gonna be hard because the attachment is ridiculous we got to get them unattached to you we have to find a way to shut the doors and when that is done if we can do that for you you can never ever open them again there's no more you know investigating alone in your house there's no more searching for answers there's no more practicing anything once it's shut you can never do it again okay that's not a problem I just want to stop and I want to get better I will do whatever it takes I just I want to be happy and healthy and I want to feel safe in my own home I'm gonna tell you right now we don't feel safe in your home you notice from our experience that ghosts are kind of like parasites, okay? They feed off certain energies, all right? Okay. Now, the opposite energy is something that is going to deeply affect them in, in a negative way as far as pushing them backwards, all right? Uh, they're feeding off anger. There has to be happiness in this home, okay? Okay. Even if it sounds crazy, but play a cartoon. Play a children's cartoon once a day. Uh, play music in this home. I was just gonna suggest that. Okay, play music. Be happy. Yeah, I live in this home. I'd like to okay. open okay. the so blinds, guy. open the doors, get Let some the sunshine in here. In here. Okay. You know, I usually like to be up around dancing when I clean. I'll admit yeah. it. <laughs> but that's the best thing that you can do, because that energy that you're giving off is like poison to the dark energies that are here. Okay, I notice a lot here too. I get depressed a lot being in this house. And that's going to be the hardest thing. You're going to have to physically, you know, take on this depression that you have and force yourself to be happy. Okay. You have to. You know, that's going to be your number one tool is being happy. Okay? Nothing can bring you down if you're happy. If something tries to communicate with you, you ignore it. Because I'm telling you right now, this is going to amp up. Okay. The fight's going to begin. And, you know, basically what's going to happen here is that they're going to probably fight back. We don't know how much they're going to fight back, but just from what we're getting from them right now, they're already trying to pick fights. So basically this is going to turn into a battle. This is going to be tough. It's scary. We're, we're here to help you, Tina. And I thank you guys so much. We're gonna help you. We're gonna help you. We're gonna be here with you every step of the way. I promise you that. Okay. So, Thanks. um, let me turn the camera off, please. Thank you.